Well, it being five o'clock, uh, uh, good evening. Welcome to the uh, November 4th meeting of the Committee on City Services. I'm City Councilor Stan Moulton, Chair of uh, the Committee, and I will be presiding uh, at this meeting, uh, which is being audio and video recorded. Uh, Laura, would you call the roll, please? Councilor Moulton. Here. Councilor LaBarge. Here. Councilor Dobbs. Here. And we've been informed that Councillor Rothenberg is not able to attend. That is correct. She's dealing with a pers personal matter today, so she will not be with us. Okay. Is there anybody here who wishes to make public comment to the committee? Not seeing any, we'll proceed to the minutes of our October 7th meeting. Uh, is there a motion for approval? Move to approve the minutes of October 7th, 2024. I'd second that. Okay, motion made by Councilor Labard, seconded by Councilor Dubs. Is there any uh, additions, changes, or other corrections? Being none, roll call Laura on the uh, minutes of October 7th, please. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Labard. Yes. And Councilor Dubs. Yes. Minutes are approved uh, unanimously. Okay, so now we have a number of appointments before us today, and I should uh, explain that uh, Councilor Rothenberg has sent her reports on the two candidates that she interviewed to Councilor Labarge, who will be reading them. And first up is Devin Bruce for the Community Preservation Committee. That interview was done by Councilor Rothenberg. So, Councilor Labarge, if you would read her report, please. Yes. Um, Devin Bruce. 20 years ago, Devin was living in Washington, D.C., working in crash investigations with a Ph.D. in human factors engineering. She then moved to Northampton after meeting a woman who would become her life partner, a communications director at Mount Holyoke College. Devin made arrangements to continue on with her job in DC, working remotely from Northampton. She was very curious to learn more about our city and thought one of the best ways to get to know us was through service and service she did. She joined the planning board, the Survivor Center, the Center for the Arts, Transportation and Parking Commission, and more. She also took advantage of the opportunity to take classes at Smith College, including immunology and Black women's history. Debbie was on track to retire from both work and volunteering so that she could focus on traveling during her retirement. But the pandemic had other plans. Debbie, Devin decided it would be better to stick around these parts. And so she decided to keep on serving. Last winter, I had the pleasure, and that's corporally speaking, of volunteering beside Devin at the Downtown Northampton Association's Ice Festival. Devin and I hauled many heavy canisters of hot water so the public couldn't enjoy hot chocolate in the park and we had fun doing it. I can say for sure that Devin is kind, but straightforward, sharp as a tack, honest about her observations, generous with her humor, and willing to revisit an opinion if presented with new information. I'm certainly not the only person who enjoys working with her. I understand that the chair of the CPC is eager to have her back on his committee. Devin looks forward to it and enjoys the upbeat nature of the CPC's work. So without further ado, because I think highly of the CPC, their chair and Devin Bruce, is, it is without reservation that I recommend she be appointed once more to the community preservation. And I know we all are grateful for her willingness to serve. So anyways, I would like to make a motion with a positive recommendation 
for Deborah Bruce to be appointed on the Community Preservation Committee to the full city council. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. So that motion was made by Councilor Labarge and uh, seconded by Councilor Dubs for a positive recommendation on Devin Bruce to the Community Preservation Committee. Thanks for reading that report, uh, Councilor Labarge. And I would uh, add to it, of course, that uh, many of us know uh, Devin Bruce also as an elected trustee for Forbes Library. Exactly. Is there uh, is there uh, any questions? Of course, we can't ask any questions. Councilor Rothenberg is not here, but is there any comment? Seeing none, uh, yes, go ahead, Council Labarge. Yes, I, I have to say what Corbelly had stated. Um, she is a very, very thoughtful person, and especially at Forbes Library. I remember when she was there and working as a trustee. She's an excellent candidate. That's it. Okay, thank you, Council Labarge. Anything else? Okay, then uh, roll call, please. Uh, Laura, on a positive recommendation for Deb and Bruce. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubb. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Well, that, uh, well, that is a uh, three, three, uh, three votes for a positive recommendation. That will go to the city council on Thursday, this Thursday, which is uh, November 7th. Okay, next up is... Uh, Hannah Ray, Hannah Ray, uh, candidate for appointment to the Historical Commission as the Historic Northampton nominee. And this uh, also an interview done by Councilor Rothenberg. Uh, uh, and again, will be read by Councilor Labarge. Um, I'm reading off what um, the Councilor from Ward 3, Rothenberg, had sent me. And I read it over very thoroughly. Hannah Ray tells me, which is quarterly, was selected for this appointment as a representative of the historic Northampton, which we all know as much beloved nonprofit and museum in Ward 3. Hannah joined Historic Northampton's Board of Directors last year, but has enjoyed a long friendship with Timber Framer Douglas Thayer and Alicia Spencer who led the exciting restoration of historical Northampton Shepherd Barn, where hundreds of locals got together and chosen wood, hammered pegs, and pulled the barn together. We all knew that was going on. Hannah grew up in Northampton and attended the South Street schools in the mid eighties. She moved away to Cape Cod for a time and started a family. Eventually she returned with her husband and two children who are now in college. Hannah has always been interested in historic preservation. Her st stepfather lived in Calvin Coolidge's home on Massasoit Street, but that's not the only historical home she's been in. Her work as an interior designer frequently brings her into historic homes, where she works on everything from custom upholstery to collaboration with architects. Her business called Workroom Design Studio was based for eight years in Florence and for the past two years has been located near Forbes Library on West Street. Hannah is happy to have been invited to serve on the Historical Commission, especially being appointed alongside longtime friend and fellow historic Northampton board member, Douglas Thayer. She also spoke fondly of one of our newest appointees, Mikkel Curtin, and I'm sure she will get on well with the rest of the group. I found Hannah to be very outgoing, but about relaxed. She is friendly, smart, creative, energetic, and easy to talk to. If chosen to serve, Hannah would like to help reinstate the commission's historical preservation award right away. This award recognizes building and design work that integrates historical features, even something as simple as a lovely porch. And there's a little bit more. Hannah's enthusiasm for the field is palpable, 
and I want to thank her for sharing her expertise and interests with the city. It is without reservation that I recommend Hannah Ray for this appointment and thank Barbara Blumenthal for recommending her as a successor. I would like to make a, a motion with a positive recommendation for Hannah Roy to be appointed on the Historic <laughs> Commission to Full City Council. I'll second that. Okay, motion made by uh, Councilor Labarge and seconded by Councilor Dubs for a positive recommendation on uh, uh, Hannah Ray. Thank you, Councilor Labarge, for reading that uh, report. Any comments from anybody? Uh, hearing none, then a roll call vote. Laura, please, on a positive recommendation for Hannah Ray to the Historical Commission. Councilor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that uh, passes with three positive votes, and uh, that positive recommendation will go to the City Council on Thursday, November 7th. All right, next up, you've had a little bit of a preview of uh, Douglas Thayer, who is the mm -hmm. second... Uh, uh, appointee to the Historical Commission. I interviewed Douglas, and uh, I will uh, uh, confirm what um, Councilor Rothenberg reported, that it's interesting that uh, both he and uh, Hannah Ray are, are being appointed at the same time. They are longtime friends and, and colleagues. Uh, Douglas um, is a uh, furniture maker uh, and a builder. Uh, he, uh, he lives in Florence, has a, uh, uh, both a wood shop and a metal shop, uh, on Locust Street in Florence. Um, uh, he has lived, uh, in the Valley for, uh, about almost 30 years, uh, the past eight in Northampton and before that in West Hampton. And he's worked as a self-employed builder primarily in the Valley for the last 15 years. He's, uh. He's uh, been a kind of a, a woodworker for his entire life. He grew up in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. His dad was a carpenter, and uh, and Doug worked with his uh, his father in their basement uh, wood shop from a young age. He attended, uh, graduated from uh, Rochester Institute of Technology with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, where he studied uh, woodworking and furniture design. Early in his career, he was primarily a, a craftsman. Uh, he specialized in uh, making wooden and concrete benches, which he sold at, at crafts fairs. Uh, he moved to the Valley uh, with his wife uh, when she got a job at Bay State Medical Center. And uh, he has restored a lot of older structures, uh, both homes and other buildings, and as uh, uh, was mentioned uh, in the report on Hannah Ray, uh, Doug Thayer was the general contractor for the Sep Shepherd Barn restoration, um, which was a, a year-long project which required moving the barn. You probably remember there were a lot of volunteers who turned out for that to, to help move the, the barn. Uh, that's where he met uh, Laurie Sanders, co-director of Historic Northampton. And it was actually Laurie who recommended uh, that Doug seek a uh, an appointment to the Historical Commission because of his interest in historic structures and, and their preservation. His uh, perspective on uh, older structures is if you can save it and reuse it much better than, than knocking it down. He would prefer to use older structures uh, and and has a, a, a real eye, I think, for what can be saved and reused. His children are now older in high school, so he feels he has time uh, to volunteer in the community. He, he sees the Historical Commission as being a, a good fit for him because, as he puts it, uh, he is every day, he is sort of analyzing the integrity of existing structures and uh, really looking to for their for their reuse. So I think 
I agree that uh, this is a good fit for him. He brings years of experience and a, a, a great perspective on uh, on saving uh, existing existing buildings. So, I would uh, I would make a motion for a positive recommendation on I Douglas second. Thayer. Okay. Uh, motion. I made the motion and uh, seconded by Council Labarge for Douglas Thayer to the Historical Commission. Any any questions or comments? Okay, Laura, roll call please on Douglas Thayer's appointment or a rec positive recommendation on his appointment. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Okay, so that uh, is approved with three positive votes for a positive recommendation for Douglas Thayer to the Historical Commission. Also going to the City Council on uh, November 7th, this Thursday. All right, next up we have uh, Amy Kaling, a, uh, an, uh, an appointee to, the, to fill a vacancy on the License Commission. And Council Labarge, you interviewed uh, Amy. I had a really great talk with Amy um, periodically. And I asked her, what brought you to Northampton? She stated, I first came to Northampton in the fall of 1989 to attend Smith College. I graduated from Smith in 1993 and left the Valley for a little over a decade, living in and around Boston and then Seattle. In the spring of 2005, while living in Seattle, my husband and I had our son. At that time, both of our families were concentrated on the East Coast, and we felt a strong pull to move closer to family, coinciding with some changes with my husband's employer. We returned to Northampton. My husband was born and raised here. And after looking for houses up and down the valley, we bought a house in Florence. We selected Northampton in particular because of the strong school system, the vibrant downtown, the proximity to friends and family in the area, and because we both have a deep love for the Northampton community. And knowing Amy and her family, they all have been highly involved, which I know as a city councilor in the community. What do you know about the License Commission? Broadly speaking, Amy stated, I am familiar with its role and powers, that it arbitrates issues involving liquor and entertainment licenses, trying to resolve questions and concerns that arise with respect to both types of licensing. These issues can involve, among other things, license transfers, compliance with regulations, and operations within the restrictions of a particular type of license, the insurance of new licenses, and the replication of existing licenses. There are a regulatory body established under the Massachusetts statuary law, compromised of three volunteer individuals with at least one member from each of the major political parties, one of whom serves as a chair with a staff assistant of the city's administration, licensing and economic development coordinator. They meet monthly, typically on Zoom post-COVID. I am very familiar with many of the sorts of issues that they address. Having attended numerous licensed commission meetings annually from spring 2016 through the summer of 2023, during the time that I served as the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. I understand how their meetings are run the organization of the proceedings and requirements for documentation to be filed in advance, the sorts of information that is expected to attendees and the types of questions that typically arise. Then I asked her, what interest 
what interested Amy in applying for the appointment to the License Commission. And she stated, during my time as the director, executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association, I grew deeply appreciate the amount of work, the dedication and personal sacrifice that our small business community puts into their livelihood. I also de developed a strong belief in the importance of allowing everybody to have their voices heard in the appropriate venue and of making decisions that are grounded in law and balance businesses, municipal and private interests. <coughs> now that I've moved from the role into another position outside of Northampton, I have been looking for a way to stay connected to the business community that is outside of separate from the DNA. The License Commission feels like a wonderful opportunity to draw on my work experience, as well as my experience as a resident here in town. <coughs> Excuse me. I asked Amy, is there a particular issue that you are interested in working on? If there is a role that the License Commission can play in encouraging the reopening of the Caliban, I would have particularly welcomed that opportunity. But beyond that, I am most interested in simply working with the folks who come before the Commission to find ways to help Northampton's restaurant, entertainment scenes thrive in a collaborative partnership with the broader community. Then I asked her, what is your background? And I think if you looked at her application, pretty smart, pretty smart woman. She graduated from Smith College, have a JD from Suffolk University School of Law, and an MA in political science from the University of Washington. I worked as an attorney in Boston, Springfield, and Northampton before shifting my employment to the nonprofit sector. From 2016 through, through 2023, I serve as the exec executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. Since August, 2023, I have been the director of community and economic development for the city of Greenfield. As mentioned above, I was the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association from May 2016 through July 2023. During that time, I gained a strong understanding of many of the challenges facing bars, restaurants, and ent entertainment venues, including those directly impacted by their licenses and by the lack of available liquor licenses. I developed strong relationships with many of those owners and managers and built trust and accountability that I think will serve me well should any of them appear at the License Commission. I also engaged in what was essentially informal mediation issues between our small businesses, community, and others, the city, the residents, and visitors. I think I have a solid appreciation for the importance of both liquor and entertainment licenses to the bottom line of a business plan or the success of an event and a strong desire to find solutions that work as well as possible for all parties. My experience as a former attorney, as well as my academic back background, has given me significant experience in reading and interpreting laws, statutes, and regulations, and skill at both being a strong advocate and negotiating outcomes that follow the law while respecting the needs and desire of the parties involved. <laughs> Finally, working on the municipal side of things in my, yeah, current, that's okay. position, in my current position, is offering me a better understanding of the limitations of a municipality, the areas in which there might be room to push back or make an ask of a city 
and the situations in which a municipal policy simply can't act. I would like to make a motion with a positive recommendation for Amy Kellerine to be appointed on the license commission to the full city council. <coughs> I'll second that. Okay, uh, motion made by Councilor Barge, seconded by Councilor Dubs for a positive recommendation on Amy K. Lane's appointment to the License Commission. Thank you very much, Councilor Barge, for that very complete uh, report on uh, on Ms. K. Lane. Any um, questions, comments? All right, I'll simply, I, I want to kind of... Uh, summarize the what I see as the key points uh, in uh, what uh, Ms. Kaline brings to this position uh, as as um, as Council Labarge described, I think that she brings a a, a rather unique perspective uh, as both uh, as someone who is now serving in a municipal position in Greenfield, uh, has uh, experience as a lawyer, and has uh, uh, extensive uh, understanding of the business community in Northampton through her years directing the Downtown Northampton Association. And in that, uh, in, in all of that, I think she will bring a perspective of being someone who understands the challenges for businesses, as well as the responsibilities of a municipality in handling uh, this extremely um, uh, important uh, decisions around uh, licensing. So I think that we are very fortunate to have someone of uh, Ms. Kaylane's uh, expertise uh, willing to serve. And I, I enthusiastically support that. Okay, seeing no other comments, then a roll call, please. Laura, on a positive recommendation for... Uh, Amy K. Lane to the License Commission. Okay. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Uh, okay. That will also, that's three, three uh, positive votes on uh, Amy K. Lane. That also will go to the uh, City Council on Thursday, November 7th. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, now we're on to, uh, let's see, the last two uh, appointments are uh, Richard Meyer to the Conservation Commission. And this actually was a, uh, I had uh, said I would interview him, but then uh, Council Labarge informed me that she could do that. So Council Labarge will report on her interview with Richard Meyer. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. When I saw that name, you know, Richard Meyer, and then when I talked with him, he said, Marianne, do you remember Downey Meyer? I said, oh my God, Richard, that's you. Everybody mm -hmm. used to call him Downey. Anyways, I have a great talk with him. Very interesting. And um, I asked him questions. I asked him also what brought you to Northampton. In July of 2005, my wife accepted a position as a physician at Bay State Medical Center. We chose to live in Northampton because it seemed to us to be a great community in which we could raise our two sons, who were toddlers when we moved down from New Hampshire. I asked him, what do you know about the Conservation Commission? I served on the Conservation Commission from 2008 to 2015. I am very familiar with the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and with the Northampton Wetlands Protection Ordinance. I understand the procedures that the commission must follow in pursuing its work and have worked closely with a number of current members of the commission and with the planning department staff. I also understand the role that the Conservation Commission plays as the principal story of conservation lands with the city and have worked with the organizations that are engaged in partnerships with the commission to preserve and expand those lands. I asked him, what interested you in applying for the appointment 
to the conservation. He stated he believes that the Conservation Commission plays an important part in preventing degradation of wetlands and conservation lands that are all invaluable resources for the citizens of this city. While my work schedule became too busy in 2015 to continue, to continue on the commission, I have recently retired from teaching and now have the time available to contribute if I am appointed to serve. I asked him, is there a particular issue that you are interested in working on? As recent flooding disasters from intense rainfall had made clear, we will be living with a changed climate for the foreseeable future and our city government must plan for the challenges that lie ahead. As the part of the North Hampton's government that is most directly concerned with flood control and storm damage prevention. The Conservation Commission will work to ensure that the harmful consequences of intense rainfall events are limited. And I would appreciate the opportunity to assist the commission in carrying out this vital work. And I asked Richard, what is your background? I was born and raised in Southern New England. I attended the University of California, Berkeley as an undergraduate. I continued my e education at the University of S Chicago Law School. After graduation, I worked as an attorney in California before transitioning to teaching. During the last 25 years, I have taught science in Maryland, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. My two sons were born in New Hampshire and moved with me to Florence in 2005. They grew up in Northampton and attended the public schools before graduating from Northampton High in the past few years. And I asked him, what work or life experience do you have that is relevant to this role? And he stated, I received my law degree from the University of Chicago in 1992. I was an attorney in a private practice with a law firm of Malibni and Myers in San Francisco, working principally on insurance issues related to environmental damage claims. I let legal practice to become a science teacher. For the past 25 years, I worked at the college and high school levels teaching biology, human anatomy, and psychology, and computer science. My most recent teaching position was at Mohawk Trail Regional High School in Buckland, Massachusetts, where I taught from 2015 to 2023. As he mentioned above, I served on the Cons Conservation Commission for a number of years. I served as the Conservation Commission's representative to the Northampton Community Preservation Commission for four years. So that is that. And we had a lengthy talk twice. So I would like to make a motion with a positive recommendation for Richard Meyer to be appointed on the Conservation Commission to the full city council. I'll second that. Okay, positive recommendation for Richard Meyer uh, is a motion made by Councilor Barge, seconded by Councilor Dubbs. Thank you again, Councilor Barge, for your very uh, thorough report on Richard Downey Meyer, who, uh, in addition to his previous service on the Conservation Commission, also at one time was a school committee member in yeah. Northampton. So he has extensive uh, experience already uh, in uh, in service to the to the community. Any uh, further discussion? Uh, <laughs> if not, roll call, please. Laura, on a positive recommendation for Richard Meyer to the Conservation Commission. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that uh, 
receives three uh, positive votes uh, for a positive recommendation for Richard Meyer to the Conservation Commission, which will also go to the City Council this Thursday on November 7th. And finally, we have uh, Chris Palamas, a candidate for the uh, to fill a vacancy on the housing partnership. And Councillor Dubs, you talked with with Chris. I did, yes. And uh, before I read my report, I just wanted to make a quick note that uh, Chris um, recently changed his name to Christos, which is like his original uh, birth name that was shortened at some point in time when he was a child. Uh, so he prefers, he, his legal name is still Chris, but he prefers Christos. So as I read the report, I will refer to him as Christos. Okay. So that is because he's Greek. Exactly. And that's why yeah. I changed it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Because I know yes, that we've gone through that with our family. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So okay. it was a privilege to speak with Christos Palamos last week regarding his application and hopefully upcoming appointment to the housing partnership. I've known Christos since I first joined the Disability Commission back in 2019. Although he had already left the commission before I became a member, he was the longtime chair before me. And during his time as Disability Commission chair, Christos worked with the city uh, in the development of the Northampton ADA transition plan, along mm -hmm. with the creation of a new job position in our city known as the ADA coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, Christos and I both agreed that he is overqualified for a role on the housing partnership, having had so much experience in his extremely interesting life. Nevertheless, we talked about his, uh, his background and what led him to wanting to be involved in the Northampton government again. Uh, looking for change and a place to settle down, Christos and his wife moved to Northampton 23 years ago. Before living here, Christos was one of the original disability activists. Uh, he was right there climbing up the steps of our Capitol in 1990, playing mm -hmm. his part to get the ADA passed into law. <clears throat> in the late 70s and early 80s, even before ADA, he worked with a groundbreaking organization in Atlanta, Georgia called Concrete Change, alongside its founder, Eleanor Smith, making Atlanta uh, the first city with uh, an organization that's dedicated to making all homes visitable. Uh, that's a term um, that they coined back then in the late 70s, visitable, which is, mm -hmm. makes all homes uh, able to be visited by people of all you know abilities, disabilities, and uh, of all types of mobility. Uh, so Christos also worked alongside Ron Mace, who he calls the design genius of the disability movement, who coined the term universal design. Christos uh, worked with Ron at the Center for Accessible Housing as a consultant and an analyst of policy. Uh, he also worked with the company Stavros to create the first accessible apartments in, in Amherst in 1980. Uh, when I asked Christos what led him to apply to the housing partnership, he pointed to the Affordable Homes Act as inspiration, which was mm -hmm. s signed into law on August 6, 2024 by Massachusetts Governor Maura Healy. Christo says that this legislation addresses the need and the urgency for more affordable housing, especially for people with disabilities. In terms of a particular issue that Christos would like to address and explore on the housing partnership, his number one focus is uh, visibility, uh, sorry, visitability, like we were talking about before. Um, so he would ask questions like uh, when a house is being built, he would ask, uh, is the front door at the ground level or primary level? where anybody can enter. Um, he used an example of, of a house he saw recently being built in Northampton uh, that had one step. And he he thought to himself, well, is there any way we could have avoided that one step mm -hmm. to make it a, a more visitable home? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So um, uh, he would also ask, is there an accessible full or half bathroom on the primary level of the houses that are being built? Uh, these are questions he would look into and other interests that Christos would have as a member of the housing partnership are uh, upgrading and modernizing housing, as well as looking for ways to help homeowners stay homeowners, um, ways to maintain home ownership. Uh, Christos said he decided to become involved in government again, particularly with a focus on housing, because he says it is a great way for him to be useful to utilize his lifetime of experience. I couldn't recommend Christos Palamas more to be on the housing partnership. 
Uh, simply put, the city is lucky to have him back. Um, he is a forward thinker and a pioneer. And for that reason, I'd like to make a motion for a positive recommendation of Christos Palamos to the Housing Partnership. Are you voting on it? Oh, I was going to make a, I said I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone has to second that. All right. Motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Councillor Dubbs uh, moved that we uh, move uh, Chris Palamas forward with a positive recommendation to the housing partnership, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dubbs, um, both for your, uh, your report, but also for your uh you you have known Chris for some time Christos for some time now and uh I appreciate your uh, your the 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 uh the, the kind of context that you bring to that positive recommendation. And I particularly like the term visitability. I hope that we yes. find ourselves using that more. Yes, I, yep. I had actually never heard that term before until he brought it up and I, I was I was also really excited to hear that word. Yeah. Councilor Barge. Yes, um, I have to say everything that Chris and what Councilor Dub read off is all about Chris. I've known Chris and I remember when Maura Healy was running the first time, I was interviewed by Channel 40 and her at Chris's house when she was running her campaign. Chris also told me way back, he also worked with Maura Healy on designing many, many ADA ordinances for law, for law. And I don't know if he told you about that, Jeremy, but he that did, was yes. critical. Yes, very critical. They are the most compassionate people that I have known for over going on almost 23 years. And I've been to mostly all their get togethers they have on their home. I think what was said about housing? Chris and I had lengthy talks about affordable housing in this city. And I agree with him being nominated to be on housing partnership. You couldn't ask for a better, better candidate than Chris Palamas. Thank you, Jeremy, for interviewing him. Of course, yeah, it was a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further comment? If not, Laura, a roll call, please, on a positive recommendation for uh, Christos, as he is now calling himself Palamas, uh, <laughs> for a uh, appointment to the housing partnership. Sure. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Okay, so that also receives three positive votes, and that recommendation will go to the City Council as well on Thursday, November 7th. And, Laura, you will get all those on the agenda for this week. I will indeed. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Thank I, you, Laura. <laughs> uh, that, that concludes the appointments. I, I just I want to say for the record, I'm going to pick up on something that uh, Councillor Dubb said about uh, the last appointee, that we're lucky to have him back i think we can say that of all the all six of the people that we've considered tonight northampton is very fortunate to have such a talented pool of experienced individuals who are willing to serve in these volunteer positions yeah thank you counselor um so the next uh, item on the agenda is uh a request by council labarge for an earlier start for the December 2nd meeting of the Committee on City Services because of another event that she has that evening. So I have proposed uh, that we start that meeting at 4 p.m. rather than 5. And I think I saw a response already from Councillor Dubbs that he could he could make that. So yes. we're all available. Um, I, I, I'm not sure about Councillor Rothenberg, but. OK, I did get an email when I sent it to you if about changing the date, she yep. said she did not have a problem with it. Okay. At that time when I emailed you. Okay. Okay. So anyways. Okay. All right, Laura, that and that time is uh, uh acceptable for you as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. So I can change it on the calendar. Yep. So if you would change that on the calendar, our meet our December second meeting uh, uh will start at four PM. I wanna thank you, counselors, very, very much. It, this is something very special yes. to me 
Yum yes. is the Rotary. And yes. the Christmas okay. party we put on for Northampton and East Stanton Rotary also for the families of need. And I can't tell you if you saw the, the children there, when they see Santa and the elves and all the presents that are given by all of us rotaries throughout East Stampton and North Stampton for every child who the parents had filled out an application and what they would like from Santa, just to see how excited they are. It's just hit your heart that you're making these children really feel like they are wanted, wanted. Yes, and uh, I appreciate. I thank all my counselors for allowing to make that change. Well, of course, Councilor yeah. Barge. I know that you're very involved with that, uh, that, uh, that very uh, uplifting um, event on December second. So thank yeah. you for you, for working on that. And if something should come up, you know, if I went from four thirty to five, but you got to have three people. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything no. after. Five o'clock is going to be very difficult for me because I got to dress up as an elf and then drive. Mm -hmm. to the well, uh, Council Labarge, we're happy to have you dress as an elf for our meeting <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, any any other new business? No. Okay, then I think a motion to adjourn is in order. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second it. Okay, a motion to adjourn made by Councilor Dubb, seconded by Councilor Labarge. Roll call, please, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Dubbs. Yes. And Councilor Moulton. Yes. Motion to adjourn passes unanimously at 548. Thank you all for uh, all that work that you did uh, preceding tonight's meeting. And uh, we'll see you all Thursday, if not before. And uh, if you haven't voted yet, uh, don't forget tomorrow. Well, is, uh, I've done mine already. Tomorrow's yeah, I voted, the election. I voted already. Yeah. Okay. See you well, Thursday. Okay. Night. Good night. Good night. night.